Hello everyone, my name is Victoria Shubina. I'm a doctoral student at Tampere University and an early stage researcher at the AWAY project. And today I would like to present our recent research paper Technical Perspectives of Digital Contact Tracing Applications on Wearables for COVID-19 Control. Let's look at the structure of how we are going to progress through this presentation. These are the key elements. Introduction and motivation, principles of wireless automated contact tracing applications, contact tracing applications on wearables, our research findings, and to conclude this presentation, I will provide a summary for your attention. Firstly, I would like to highlight the motivation behind our study. During the COVID-19 outbreak, consumer wearable devices such as smart bracelets, smart watches and smart rings have started to play a vital role in mitigating the spread of the virus. And smartphones that are frequently carried by users also may be interpreted by belonging to the category of wearables. One of the emerging and most promising technology is a wireless contact tracing application which intends to determine the probability of being infected with a disease in a fully automated or semi-automated manner which is based on wireless signals. Existing trade-offs of contact tracing applications require thorough analysis of technical capabilities such as accuracy, energy consumption, availability, sources of errors when dealing with wireless channels, and privacy challenges. The key idea of a wireless contact tracing application is illustrated on this slide, assuming that there are several mobile users in a certain area starting from user A to user F, and each of them is equipped with some wearable sensors or mobile devices. Commonly, users without any wireless sensors are invisible to basic wireless receivers, so these users could not be considered in the infrastructure-based wireless contact tracing. The wireless contact tracing chain and multiple sources of errors are summarized on this slide. In an automated contact tracing application, the highly relevant parameter for the disease control is the probability of protecting the users, followed by a certain action. Here are the cases that we considered. The joint probability of two users found in vicinity of each other to use the same contact tracing application. The false alarm and misdetection probability of estimating that two users are within infection distance from each other, so meaning that less than 2 meters for more than 15 minutes. The probability that the connectivity to the cloud is established and works properly the illness probability, so the actual probability that the user B gets the disease. Our proposed model for maximum prevention probability is presented on the slide, where the PP max is the target maximum prevention probability, PU is the probability of a user to use a contact tracing app, PMD is the misdetection probability, PC is the probability that the cloud server connectivity is established and works properly, and PI is the probability to get infected. The wireless received signal always reveals random fluctuations due to reflections, refraction, scattering, and diffraction on wireless obstacles in the signal path. Moreover, particular movements in the environment, as people and cars moving around, doors opening and closing, also impact the wireless medium. Such random fluctuations are especially crucial for distance estimates, such as a user at a far distance outside the typical infectious range can be easily mistaken for a user at a nearby distance, so inside the typical infectious range uh, of 2 meters. There would be a threat of having some false positives and false negatives due to the random signal fluctuations of the signal used in the contact tracing applications, even in cases where the rest of the contact tracing chain is functioning perfectly well. Also, the timing errors are relevant to all contact tracing wireless applications. Timing errors influence both the estimation of the duration of the exposure as well as the distance estimates between users. 
Clock errors between the device clocks of users A and B are certainly part of timing errors, especially when the synchronization to the cloud server is done rarely, such as once a day. Uh, timing errors are less influential by misdetection, which means again, not finding out that user A was at a less than 2 meters away from user B and false alarm, so mistakenly, de mistakenly detecting that user B was at less than 2 meters from user A. This impact of timing errors on timing-based distance estimates makes the choice of an, a received signal strength-based distance estimation to be preferred choice in modern contact tracing applications. There are two main concepts for architecture. The first one is a centralized architecture where the main information such as users' temporary IDs and timestamps are processed and stored on the central server Thus, the server has all the information about all users using the app. And the second one is a decentralized or federated architecture where users keep on their own devices the relevant information such as their own temporary IDs, neighbors' temporary IDs and timestamps. They contact the server only to report a confirmed infection case or to download temporary IDs of other users who reported the infection to the central server. The vast majority of the governmental contact tracing applications rely on Bluetooth Low Energy Technology and Received Signal Strength measurements. The first one, the Decentralized Privacy Preserving Proximity Tracing, or DP3T, is a Bluetooth Low Energy Decentralized Protocol. The second one is Google Apple Exposure Notification System, which also relies on distance estimates between devices and a centralized architecture similar to DP3T. No location information is stored about the users. And the main difference of these solutions from DP3T is that uh, some features of it will remain proprietary, whereas DP3T is a fully open source protocol. The Pan-European Privacy Preserving Protocol is a centralized solution that uses the proximity tracing, but no geographic location or any additional personal information are collected. And uh, also, the, all the events are deleted from the system after some period of time. Another solution is robust and privacy-preserving proximity tracing protocol, which is built on a federated server industry infrastructure. In this case, privacy is preserved by encryption, and the users need to obtain trust in the server that stores their information. Another solution, uh, such as private automated contact tracing, is a decentralized solution. In order to be adopted by a free market, a wireless contact tracing application must comply with a fair trade-off between several design constraints, such as the following. Privacy preservation constraint means that in order to preserve the user's privacy, the application must obey the data minimization principle. Trust constraint means that a user is more likely to remove an application that fails to provide the expected results. Reliable range constraint requires both accurate short range and robust long range connectivity solutions installed on the same device. And also it is important to have a long lasting battery on the mobile device to use the contact tracing application. Here we illustrate an example of fundamental challenges in multidimensional plane between the various sources of uncertainty in using an automated wireless contact tracing application through a wearable device. A target maximum prevention probability of 50% and the easy surface 3D plots are here to show the dependence on three technical parameters – user adoption, cloud connectivity and misdetection probabilities. And each ESA surface corresponds to a specific value of PI. A smaller surface illustrates the fact that the target prevention probability can be achieved with stricter conditions on the probabilities, while a larger surface shows a better prevention probability for a wider combination of connectivity errors probabilities, user adoptions and misdetections due to the wireless signal variability. Here is a scenario where a target prevention probability decreases to only 30%, and this can be achieved with a 50% user adoption rate and 70% correct cloud connectivity, and up to 
percent of misdetection probabilities. In our study, we have provided several technical perspectives on digital contact tracing applications via mobile devices and variables for effective COVID-19 control. We have defined a performance metric for the maximum prevention probability, which carries the message of how much a digital contact tracing application could help versus the situation when no digital contact tracing app is used. We have observed how these technical parameters are determined by the wireless technologies used in estimating the distances between users, their connectivity to the cloud, and their exposure duration. Clearly, the future success of digital contact tracing apps depend on many factors, such as technical, ethical, and social factors. So, this is the end of my presentation. I would like to say thank you for your attention and say a bigger thank you to the European Union's Horizon 2020 for funding the AWARE project and allowing us to advance our research. Feel free to ask questions and contact me in case you have any comments.